4.2 critical points and local maxima and local minima and we're going to talk once again about the first derivative test with um, more examples and some of those tricky questions that again are the ones that ask you to find letters A, B, C and D and um, I'm going to show you two different methods of, of using a first derivative test. So remember that if you have a local minimum we're talking about the slopes. So the slope on this side of the function is negative. So this would be f prime x is less than zero. Here is where um, we find our critical value. And again, that's where the slope is zero. And on this side, we have f prime x greater than zero. So in order for you to have a minimum value, you have to go from negative slopes on one side to positive slopes on the other. And that gives you a local minimum. It's pretty obvious, right, when you look at it. And conversely, if you have a maximum, on this side we have positive slopes. So f prime x is going to be greater than zero. At the critical value or critical point, we have zero slope. Now remember that it may also say, um, when you're doing some of those crazy questions, where there is a horizontal tangent. So a horizontal tangent just means where is the slope zero? And then on the other side here, you can see that we have f prime x less than zero. And that's how you get a local maximum. So again, it's a pretty obvious um, calculation or, or visual observation between the two, a local min and a local max. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, first, the first example here is y equals x to the fourth minus 8x cubed plus 18x squared. And I'm going to show you two ways of using the first derivative test. Now there also, maybe some of you already know, there is a second derivative test, but we don't talk about that until I think 4.4 when we talk about points of inflection. So if you already know that one, that's great, but I'm not going to introduce it until we're at that section in the textbook. Okay, so the question here doesn't say, but what you're trying to do here is find all the local min and maximum points for this function. Now, remember that you need to also use your head about what you already know. You know this is a quartic function, degree four. Use some of your advanced functions knowledge. It's a quartic function. It has x and y intercepts of zero. When x is zero, y is zero. And it has, um, well, so y-intercept of zero. We're not sure about the x-intercepts. We'll talk about that in a second. But it also has um, a positive leading coefficient, which means it has to start in this quadrant and end in this quadrant. Right? So um, you are going to be finding local mins or maxes because obviously this function is going to continue. We won't have an absolute maximum. Okay, so let's take the derivative. So we say y prime. And by now, I'm sure you're pretty good at taking derivatives. And once I do that, I can see that I have a common factor here of 4x. I can take out of each one of these terms. So I'm going to factor out 4x. That's going to give me x squared minus 6x minus 9. And that looks like a perfect square trinomial, doesn't it? So this is x minus 3 quantity squared. Okay, so I do have an x-intercept of 0 and I have an x-intercept of 3. So I'm going to show you the two methods for using first derivatives. And I showed you this one in the last video where you label the line y prime and you put your two, oh, we should probably say this, right, for critical value set y prime equal to zero. It's really important that you state these things. I know it's kind of tedious. You do it over and over again, but just do it. It's worth a mark, probably would be in my class. So if you set this equal to zero, you'd say the, um, the critical values are zero and three. So these are places where we could have a local min or maximum. So on my number line here, this is my preferred method, and I'm going to do the other method as well because the textbook shows you, and I'm not sure which one your teacher is going to let you use. Maybe if you show her this one, 
she might say, oh yeah, that's a smart idea. Okay, so we say zero and three. So what I do is I use the derivative, which is here, so y prime, and I plug in a value that is less than zero. So let's say I plug in, don't choose something like negative 10 or something, use something easy to work with. So I'm gonna say negative one. So if I put in negative one, and all I'm trying to find out is whether or not this function would be positive or negative. So is the slope positive or negative when I'm at negative one, which would be on the left side of the critical value, right? So I put in negative one. This is negative, and of course this is going to be squared, so it's going to be positive. So negative times a positive is a negative, and I'm going downhill like this. On the other side of zero, I'm going to choose one because it's a nice number. I put in a one here, I have positive because it's four and positive because I'm squaring. So positive, positive, that means it's positive and it's going this way. So now I wanna to go to the other side of three. So I'm going to choose the very next number, which of course is four. And I have four times four, that's positive 16. So positive and four minus three is one squared is positive. Doesn't matter, these ones are always going to be positive. So I really only need to check this one, right? So positive times a positive is a positive. So I have positive slope again. So because there isn't a change in the sign here, this is not a minimum or a maximum value. It's what we say is neither. It's neither a minimum or a maximum. So this one here, it goes down and then back up and you can actually see the way it's going to go like this. So that means it's going to be a minimum value, minimum value at when x is zero, y is also zero, so zero, zero. And three and whatever the value is for that is not a minimum or a maximum. So the other method that you use in, in your textbook is they would say, okay, so I want to know, I, I messed it up here, I need one more, one more little thing here. I want to know, this is doing the same work as this, but it's doing it in a chart form. So I would say in this one, I want when, is x, when x is less than zero, which is what I do here, right? When x is between zero and three, so zero less than x less than three. And over here, I want x greater than three. So I'm doing the very same work here, only I'm maybe being a little more careful. I don't know, I don't think so. So this is four x, so that's this one. So I have to put both of the terms here that would be multiplied or divided. If you have a rational expression, you might have something in the denominator that you have to check as well. And this is going to be x minus 3 squared. So if I put in a number less than 0, so that's going to be negative, And this is going to be positive. And a negative times a positive is a negative. So this is multiplying these together, right? So negative, positive, negative. And this one, I'm going to say, OK, if I put in 1, this would be positive. This is still positive. So my resultant is positive. Greater than 3, it's positive positive, positive. So this line here gives you the exact same thing as you get here. And actually, I think this is much easier to read. You must remember to label your line the y prime or f, f prime at x or whatever you're using. So you end up with the same solution here in that you have a value that is not, um, it's a critical value, but it is not a minimum or a maximum. And actually what your, your function is going to look like is it's going to, it's a quartic function. So remember that means three roots. So we have one like this. And when I put in something like at, at three, I'm not quite sure what the value is here, but it's certainly up, up here somewhere. So you have something that goes like this. And you might've recalled that from when we um, graphed quartic functions, you have a triple root here and a single root here, giving you a degree of four. And this, of course, is not, you have zero slope through here, but it is neither a minimum or a maximum value because you're going positive slope to positive slope. Okay, so that's how that one works. 
Now let's take a look at um, another question that uses um, a radical function. And again, we're asked to find the critical values. So the first thing you want to do, as always, is write this with the half power before you take the derivative. And then I'm going to take the derivative f prime x equals, and I have to use the chain rule here. So I have a half x squared minus 2x plus 2 to the negative 1 half and times 2x minus 2. Okay, so I'm going to simplify that because this can be put in the denominator. And this I could take out a factor of 2 and divide by this 2. That might be a little too much to see all in one step. So I'm going to write it out for you like this. So I have 1 over 2. Then I have the square root of x squared minus 2x plus 2. And this is in the numerator. And I'm going to factor out a 2. So 2 bracket x minus 1. So when I do that, you can see that these will cancel out. 2 into 2 goes once. And I'm left with x minus 1 over x squared minus 2x plus 2 and the square root of that. So that's my first derivative. So now you say what you always say when you find a find critical when you're trying to find critical values. For critical values, set f prime x equal to zero. If I set this equal to zero, you know that the only part that can be zero is what's in the numerator. That's the only way you're going to get a zero because you can't have a zero in the denominator. So that means x equals one is a critical value. It's a critical value. It's not the critical point. Remember, there's a difference. What would the critical point be? Let's write that out right here. So critical point means I plug the one back into the original function. Really don't forget to do that. It has to go back here because you're trying to find the height. It's something you're graphing which means it has to come from the function itself. So f at 1 equals the square root of 1 squared minus 2 times 1 plus 2. That's um, minus 2 plus 2, so square root of 1 is 1. So f at 1 is 1, and 1, 1 is the critical point. Critical point, okay? Okay, now I'm assuming that that is a critical point. We're going to have a minimum or maximum value because I've already done this question. So you might do this a little bit later on. Okay, so let's once again do the two different methods. I think you'll agree with me that this is probably the easier one if I just label this f prime x and I put a 1 on here and I'm going to check to the left and right of 1. So if I put in, now remember where you're plugging this in, you're plugging this into the derivative function. So right here, f prime x. And okay, let me just circle that here. We're going to plug it into here and we're going to test it on to this line. So if I put in, um, if I put in zero, I would have negative on the top and zero minus 2 plus 2, that's going to be positive. So I have negative divided by positive is a negative. And if I go to the right side of this, so we have slope this way, you might want to draw the slope on as well because that helps you visualize the minimum. And to the right side, if I put in 2, I would have positive in the top and I have, have the square root of 2 in the bottom, right? 2 squared minus 4. So 4 minus 4 plus 2, square root of 2, positive, and I'm going this way. So therefore, there is a minimum value at 1, 1. Okay, so let's go to the second method, which is your chart method. And 
you make a nice chart and you put in like I need x minus 1 here that's one of them and in the denominator I have the square root of x squared minus 2x plus 2 so you'll see you're actually doing the very same work and because 1 is my critical value I want x less than 1 and I want x greater than 1 and I want to know what the product of these signs is going to be. So again, if I go less than one, so put in zero, that's going to be negative. If I put in zero here, I would have the square root of two, which is positive. And a negative times a positive is a negative. And on this side, if I put in two, I would have positive here. And again, square root two, also positive, positive. So the same solution, just a different method. So you would then say, okay, because it goes from negative slope to positive slope, this is a first derivative test, so from negative to positive slope, therefore there is a minimum value at 1, 1. And it just so happens that if you sketch this function 1, 1, say that's here, it um, the x-intercept, if you put in 0, um, the x-intercept is uh, one, what did I do here? Into the original function, right? The x-intercept is the square root of 2. So square root of 2 is probably about here. So if you do a little more sketching on it, it's going to look sort of like that. Okay, so that's, um, again, two different methods. This is like a line test and this is the chart method. Check with your teacher to see which one they prefer. Um, I still think this is my favorite. Do that one. Unless of course your teacher doesn't like it and then of course you won't do that. Okay, so now I'm going to do number 15 for you because I think it's a really tough question and students are usually assigned it for homework. At least in my class it was always assigned and they always came back with lots of questions. So it gives you this long quartic function. There's an A, B, C, and D. They tell you that it has horizontal tangents of minus 2, minus 73, and 0, minus 9, and you're asked to find A, B, C, D, and a third point with a horizontal tangent. So there's going to be another place where the slope will be 0, and determine if they're minimum, max, or neither at the end. Okay, so the first thing you want to note is what what information is this giving me? Well, because it's telling me there's horizontal tangents, that means that f at minus 2 is going to be equal to 0. f prime, sorry. f prime at minus 2 will be 0. And f prime at 0 is going to be 0 as well. This is an interesting little value that you might not catch right away. But it's actually giving you the y-intercept, right? When x is 0, y is minus 9. So right away, so I'm going to write that here, y-intercept. Right away, I know that that means that d has to be negative 9. Okay, so f at 0 is equal to negative 9. Not f prime here. I'm talking about the function itself at 0 is negative 9. Therefore, d is equal to negative 9, and I already have one of the variables solved for, which would probably give you one mark. Okay, so now I want to see what can I do with these. So if I take the derivative and I put in negative 2, it's going to be equal to 0. So that's going to help me set up an equation. Remember, um, most of the time with these equations, you end up finding two equations with two unknowns. So let's do the derivative, f prime x equals, so I have 12x cubed plus 3ax squared plus 2bx plus c. Okay, so I know when f prime at 0 equals 0, so if I put 0 here, and I plug in 0 for my x's. This is kind of silly writing all this out for you, but you get the idea. So 0, 0, 0. 
So everything is zero. So that means C has to be equal to zero, right? All these are all zeros. C equals zero. So now I have C is zero, which means this term here doesn't exist, right? C is zero, zero X zero. So I have C is zero and I have D is negative nine. I'm gonna put a little box around those. So in case you're looking for it somewhere along the way. Okay, so I've got two of them solved for. So if I do the second one, so f prime at 2 equals 0. So f prime at 2 is equal to 12 times 2 cubed plus 3a times 2 squared plus 2b times 2. And I know that c is 0, so I don't need to even include that one anymore. And this is going to be equal to 0 at 2 because I said f at my, oh, sorry, it was minus 2. Teachers make mistakes too. Here we'll plug all these back in. Minus 2, minus 2, minus 2. F prime at minus 2 is equal to 0. So I can say this is 0. And so I have minus 8 times 12 is negative 96. And minus 2 squared is 4. So that's 12 A's. And I have minus 4 B. So I'm going to write that out just with a's and b's here. So 12a minus 4b is going to be equal to 96. Okay, so far so good. But I need another equation with a's and b's in it to solve for a and b. So the f, this one here isn't going to help me at all because f at 0 was 0. So I don't have anything I can use that one for. So I'm going to have to... Um, go to one of the other points into the original function because I have enough of the letters now anyway, right? I've got C, D, I'm just trying to find A and B. Now, this point here isn't going to help me at all because you can see if I plug that in here, I'm just going to get nine or negative nine. So I have to use this point here, minus two and minus 73. So F at minus two, is equal to negative 73, the original function, okay? This isn't the derivative. So I have to go back to this big function here, and I'm going to set that 73 equals. Now, as I'm doing this, I'm going to plug in the letters that I already know. So a times uh, minus 2 cubed plus b times minus 2 squared minus 9. Okay, that's all I have. So minus 73, and this all we have to do is clean this up now. So minus 2 to the 4th is 16, and 16 times 3 is 48. And this is going to be minus 8a, and this is going to be plus 4b minus 9. So all I have to do now is, is um, sort all these numbers out here. So I have 48 minus 9 is 39 positive. I bring it to the other side. That's minus 39, minus 39. And 9 and 3 is 12 and 4 and 7 is 11. So I have negative 112 is equal to negative 8a plus 4b. And now you can see I have two equations and two unknowns. So I'm going to take this equation here. Here's my equation 1. Here's my equation 2. I'm going to put 2 right underneath here. So I have um, minus 8a plus 4b is equal to negative 112. So that's my equation 2. And I'm going to have the same signs here. So I'm going to add together to eliminate. So I can put a big plus sign here. 12 minus 8 is 4a. And 96 plus negative 112 happens to be negative 16. So that means a is equal to negative 4. And now I've got three of my variables. And the fourth one, of course, is going to be really easy to find because I can use one of these equations. So I'm going to use equation, let's use equation 1. So 12 times not negative 4. So I'm going to say when a is equal to negative 4, 12 times negative 4 minus 4b is equal to 96. So this is minus 48. I add 48 on this side. 48 and 96 is 144. 
So B is equal to negative 36. So now I have all of the, the letters, A, B, C, D. I found them all, hooray, hooray. But that's not the end of it because they want you to find a third point with a horizontal tangent. So what I have to do now is go back to the original function, f at x. So this is, this is like the last thing we're going to do. So f at x, and I'm going to plug in what a, b, c, and d are. So I have 3x to the fourth. a is minus 4, so I have minus 4x cubed. b is negative 36, so minus 36x squared. C was 0, and D was minus 9. And I'm going to take the derivative to find that third point. So that gives me 12x cubed minus 12x squared minus 72x. How lovely is that? Don't forget, derivative of a constant is 0. And I'm going to say for critical values, set f prime x equal to 0. And I'm going to factor out um, a 12x. So I'm going to divide by 12x all around. 12x, that's going to give me x squared minus x minus 6. So that's 12x. And I factor this. That gives me x minus 3x plus 2. Nice easy factoring. And I had this 0, so I had this horizontal tangent. So that means that x is equal to 0, 3, and minus 2. And I had 0 and minus 2, so that means 3, x equals 3, is the third critical value. And I want to know, um, so there will be 0 slope, but x is 3 as well, and I want to know what the um, what the point is for 3. So I need to know f at 3, so I have the x and y coordinates. Okay, so I'm going to do that over here because I still have one more little thing to do. Oh, maybe I'll just tell you what it is. f at, uh, f at 3, what's f at 3? I did this somewhere. Minus 198. Okay, so you calculate this one f at 3 equals minus 198. Okay, so you have 3 and minus 198. We had 2, minus 2 and minus 73, and we had 0 and minus 9. And the last thing they want you to do is determine whether or not these are max, minimums, or neither. And I'm going to do it my way, or the highway, and you can... Um, do it this way with me, or you can write out a chart, or you can use both. Either way, you're going to be able to check to see if you are right. So I'm going to do f prime x. I'm labeling it. Don't forget to label it. You can't just throw a number line on, on the table and, and leave it there. And I'm going to put in these three critical points. So I have minus two critical values first, right? Zero and three. So if you have a chart, you're going to need x less than negative 2, x between minus 2 and 0, x between 0 and 3, and x greater than 3. Okay, so that's why this is kind of quicker and better, I think. Okay, so I'm checking those into the first derivative. So that's back here, this point, this, this equation right here. And I'm going to plug in something less than 3. So if I do, sorry, less than negative 2, so let's choose negative 3. So negative 3 cubed is negative 27. Negative 27 times 12. Ooh, we're getting some big numbers here. Um, I think I would get out a calculator for this one because, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. Oh, no, we don't need to do that. Let's use this one right here. So if I do negative 3, this would be negative, this would be negative, and this would be negative. So I have three negatives. That's a negative. And of course, in your chart, you would have used these, right? You would have used this one, this one, this one. So you don't need to plug it in there. You can use this one. What was I thinking? Okay, so we have negative slope here. 
and then between minus 2 and 0, I put a negative 1. That's a negative, that's a negative, that's a positive. Two negatives make a positive. And I go between 0 and 3 now, so I choose 1. Positive, negative, positive. That means negative. And finally, I go to 4, positive, positive, positive. All positives. Okay, so now you know your answer, right? What are these points? These are all local minimums. So minus two, three. This is a local min at minus two, minus 73. Uh, local max, how do I know these are locals and not absolutes? I'm gonna tell you in one second here. So this is zero and minus nine. Maybe you can think about that. And this is a local minimum at 3 and minus 198. Okay, so again, this is a quartic function, right? A quartic function. Um, this one might be an absolute minimum because we're going, yeah, it actually will be an absolute, absolute minimum. And I'll show you why. Um, I'll do a quick sketch for you here. So what you have now, is, this is not going to be to scale, right? Because we, we have to go down to um, negative 198. That's a little, let's say our axis is up here. It's a quartic function with a positive leading coefficient, right? Positive leading coefficient. So that means it's going to start in the first quadrant and end in uh, sorry, the second quadrant, it's got to go from here to here. So if I go um, a local minimum at minus 2 and minus 73, so let's say these are, how, how low do we have to go? Minus 198. So let's go um, 50, 100, 50, 200. So this is going to be minus 200 here. So I have 3 and minus 198 so one two three i know it's it's going to be a strange scale so i have zero and minus nine so i have something about here zero and minus nine i have um minus two and minus 73 so minus two and minus 73 so we did 50 100 so minus 73 would be somewhere around here and I have uh, 3 and minus 198, so way down here. Now remember, it's a quartic function, positive leading coefficient. It's got to go like this, like this, way down here. Oops, I didn't hit that very nicely. And back up like this. So this is definitely an absolute minimum. There is no absolute maximum because these are going up on both sides. Okay, so again, that, that's a pretty uh, challenging little question. I hope um, you found it helpful. And do practice these because I'm certain that your teacher will give you something asking you to find A, B, C, D or something on your unit test. I always did, and it's, it's a pretty common kind of question to see if you're understanding how it all fits together. Okay, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Um, it helps my numbers and gets more people visiting my page, which is good for the math world. Bye for now.